Today, we're getting a look at Baba TC Ataturk's talent builds. He's sitting at 1.26 billion power. He spent over $2 million on the game. So what talent builds does he use anyways? Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chiscool Gaming, and today we're taking a peek at Baba's talent builds because he has configured his commander tab to allow us to see the talents on all of the commanders that he's currently using. So I thought I'd get a quick look and just see, hey, what builds does he use? The last time I did this on a high power player was on Maverick. I'll have a card up in the top. I'll remind you of it later uh, to showcase the talents that Maverick was using. And it's always insightful to see what a player of this size chooses for their talents. So let's start with the big one. The one you all want to know, obviously Guan Yu. What talents is Baba using on Guan Yu? And this is a Rage build. This is a build that you would use if what you wanted to do was perform well in Canyon. And it makes a ton of sense that Baba will be using this build right now. The main reason you pick this over other things in Canyon is that you want to get as much Rage as possible. If you get your active skill to fire off before the enemy then you can silence them all and you can really, really wreck them. That is why he's gone all the way over here for Feral Nature. He has not gone and picked up Elite Soldiers, and the reason for that is that ultimately on the way to getting Elite Soldiers, it's a great talent. There's March Speed Reduction. There's a bunch of March Speed talents. Why spend the points over there when you can get something that actually helps you in that game mode? Now, I will point out that there are alternative builds for Guan Yu, if you wanted, you could carve off these same points, and some might argue that going into the Conquering Tree and grabbing Buckler Shield might be a more defensive play for your Guan Yu, uh, since you take less counterattack damage. Uh, but there's virtues to both builds. Having, uh, you know, counterattack reduction is good. Being able to fire off your active skills faster is good. And I'm just going to assume that for most open field fighting, Baba probably switches to a build that does in fact leverage some of this march speed. Although, there have been times, depending on who you pair this commander with, where I say, you know what, my secondary commander gives me enough march speed, I'm happy enough. I mean, a player like Baba runs around with seven marches, he's trying to control the field, right? He's got a lot of resources, presumably, and speed ups to heal up, so maybe he's just not as worried about getting places quickly He's more worried about smashing when he gets there. All of that is a lot of good reasons why he might continue to use this particular build. If you're enjoying this video so far, do me a huge favor, throw a like on the video and consider subscribing to the channel. And a big thank you to Baba, who I reached out to before making this several set of videos I've been making about Baba, uh, and said like, hey, is it cool if I make a few videos about you? And he was like, yeah, man, totally cool. And here we are. The next commander you obviously wanna see is Nevsky, am I right? And Baba is using a variation of a build that I really like. Uh, he's using a variation that focuses less on defensive capability and more on debuffs. The Nevsky build I use goes for Emblazoned Shield to dramatically reduce the skill damage that I take. I'm trying to make Nevsky as tanky as possible because Cavs are already a pretty major target. However, Baba instead seems to have gone for a debuff. Normal attacks have a 10% chance to reduce the attack of the target by 20% for two seconds. In addition, he is also going for Equestrian Excellence. This is making it so that your normal attacks have a 10% chance to increase your march speed for a short period of time. So this is the kind of build that you use when you want to chase somebody down. And this debuff is pretty decent if you've got seven marches swarming something. Reducing their attack also reduces their counterattack for what it's worth. Now, personally, I prefer the more defensive option, as I already said, but I can see why he's gone for this election. In fact, he is missing out on charge talents, a thing that us mere mortals would never imagine doing, but I think he's probably got the resources and speed up that he is not as worried as to whether or not his March sad faces but much more concerned about just doing the most damage possible in the shortest window of time possible. Which brings us to the next build. This is very interesting. Um, let's get a look at Trajan. Now, I've spent a bunch of time optimizing Trajan builds, and I wonder where this build is designed to be used. I suspect 
that he is using this in Canyon, but maybe it's just this whole, you know, like I I'm probably going to run my marches until they're sad faced um, approach where it makes sense to pick up talents like close formation in that instance where when you're below 50% of strength, your attack is boosted by 12%. That's pretty good. If you're not too worried about whether or not you're ultimately going to sad face your march, then you will probably get a lot of benefit uh, when you get lower strength. Um, typically what you uh, or what I advise for a Trajan build is to go for mixed troops and to put points into arm to the teeth and armor to the teeth. But a part of what I think is remarkable about this build is maybe he's going mono troop type. And if he's going mono troop type, that would explain the justification for avoiding those really premium talents off to the side. And you may think, well, why would you do that? Well, if you look closely at the Osiris League champions, they were running, I think, Ethel primaries, sometimes Trajan primary, with all cavalry, I believe, just pure march speed. So that's certainly worth mentioning. I'll also point out there is an extra point over here in um, Rejuvenate. Uh, you don't really need uh, three points in Rejuvenate on Trajan. Uh, that is because of how rage capping works. John Wick made this very public knowledge that um, ultimately you cap at 220 rage per turn. Your normal attacks and counterattacks put you at about 120 rage. So two points in the support tree rejuvenate is actually all you need. So that's one point you could put somewhere else. Uh, get a you know, half a percent of health. Hey, I mean, I'll take stats wherever I can get them, right? And arguably, if you were fighting in the field... You could, you could justify going for this huge AoE slow if you are using tri, uh, Trajan Primary in that situation. Which brings us to Gilgamesh, his rally lead, the charge captain. Now, if we get a look at the Gilgamesh talents, I think these surprise me. Um, something interesting is going on here. He's really valuing attack, and I kind of wonder why he's valuing attack so highly. He's also really valuing arrows knocked. When you're below 50% of strength, again, you're getting lots of attack. This is a very interesting rally build where I would probably, I mean, I would honestly, I would go full archers personally. I would go full archer tree and I would probably get rejuvenate. And if you still had the points, I would get uh, the buckler shield and conquering. I, I like the buckler shield. But what I find so fascinating about this particular build is that He's got three points unused in Venomous Sting. I don't know if that's intentional or not. Also, three points unused in Feral Nature. This just might be a placeholder build while he's switching from one thing to another thing. I mean, Baba has no shortage of talent resets here. Um, I suspect uh, if he doesn't realize that he's got this kind of offshoot and doesn't have these quite maxed yet, I think it would be worth going back and maxing these. And for those of you wondering, well, What's the value of having Feral Nature? I will say that Gilgamesh is another one of those commanders where on his active skill, he does a very important debuff, reducing health by 30%. So if you're still using Gilgamesh in your murder ball, now that we all have Scipio with a 30% health reduction, but if you're still using Gilga, then I would think you want that extra rage. The justification for this build is to put the health reduction on the enemy before the rest of your troops do their active skill. That is very powerful. So you're making a bit of a sacrifice to get that by going into the skill tree, and you have to really value that debuff highly, which I'm not sure we do anymore, given that Scipio does the same debuff and they don't overlap each other. There are a couple other builds we can, of course, look at for fun here. The Ranger build. Ah, this is a very fast-moving build on double C. It makes sense why he's using this. It's just designed to go really, really quickly. Um, he's also, interestingly picked up the Equestrian Excellence. So he's kind of got a move fast but chase people down build, which I find kind of interesting. Um, there might be a way to eke out a little bit more march speed. If I just look at my double C really quickly, we can see if I've done that a little bit differently. Let's get a look at my talents here. This is the fastest you could go, but it only works if you're not getting hit. And obviously a lot of people do end up getting hit. So I imagine if you're doing something like Ark of Osiris, you might actually pick a slightly different build because I mean, you're going to get targeted. And when you do, you really don't want the slowing effect that comes from time management. It's just a very weird talent. Lastly, but not least, let's see what Baba's doing on his Cleo. I think this makes a ton of sense. He's gone and he's maxed all the gathering talents and all the points over there. 
He's gone over here and picked up a bunch of stuff as well to just make his march a little bit safer. And, and I mean, like, yeah, what are you doing with Cleo? Like, you're not actually trying to take fights with Cleo in a gathering build. I will say one thing you can do with Cleo and the thing that I personally have done is to go in and pick up just a little bit of extra march speed. Let me see if I did that on my Cleo. I think I did, but maybe I didn't commit the stars. Okay, I didn't commit the stars on my Cleo. So let me pick a different commander that's leveled up to showcase this idea. I think Joan of Arc has the same trees. So one thing you could do to um, just go to the nodes faster is exactly what I did over here. I went up into the integration tree, so you march to and from your gathering nodes a little bit quicker. 9% more march speed. I know it's not much. I told you, it's like, I think I told you, it's a micro-optimization. Here's another 6% march speed, right? Like, it, it's, I, I don't know what I'm doing here. Expert design gives me some siege stats, but, I mean, every time I've had a gathering march out with Joan of Arc and I get hit, I get wrecked anyways. It's not like you're actually able to take a fight and I don't think there's any additional points I could put into this to get any more march speed. I'd have to actually look at this to figure out if that's a true statement or not. It's been a minute since I actually looked at a gathering build. And the last commander on his commander tab is Ishida. Ishida, uh, interesting build here. I mean, you know, what do you do with all these extra points? I think one thing you could consider is, again, going for that extra march speed. So... I don't know how much the extra troop capacity or armor to the teeth is going to do for you. Realistically, most of these talent points in these trees do really nothing for you, which is why I like going for the march speed over here. Uh, and then also, this is the support tree again, magically enough. So you've got some march speed down over here as well. Uh, but, you know, uh, firing off your active skills faster with rejuvenate, like you're dead anyways by the time you skill cycle. So there's not really anything to do with Ishida. He's got the gathering points. Those are really the only ones that matter for the sake of gathering. And obviously, Baba has all the commanders he needs to do his fighting, and it's not Cleo or Ishida. If you enjoyed this video, do me a huge favor, throw a like on here and subscribe to the channel. It supports the channel so much. And if you're looking for more videos about Baba, I made a video recently about what it would take to zero him, and I made a video about all the freaking drama that is leading up to the fact that he and I are gonna be fighting each other in this KVK, even though, like, you know, we were just chatting and some, you know, messages on Discord and like, dude, there's no animosity. We're, we're cool, man. We're cool. <laughs> um, God. Until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom. And check out those videos. Cards are up in the top.